la ciencia What's up, boys? How we doing? Uh, I have not changed out of this hoodie. We played yesterday, we're playing today. Getting in as many sessions as possible. Before Christmas break, have to run it up. I uh, had a tough one yesterday. Hopefully we're gonna run better today. I'm feeling pretty good. Let's see what we can do. Friday night, let's do it. Peace. This hand, we look down at the beautiful pocket aces under the gun. We're playing 315 effective. I open it up to $10. Uh, my buddy Matt, uh, co-owner of the Calling Stations Poker Vlog in the Hijack, uh, three bets us to $35. Gets back to me, that will not be enough, out of position especially. I make it $100, could even size up even more being out of position, but we go $100, and he makes the call. So we're going to a pretty bloated pot to this flop, heads up. Flop comes 852 two diamonds, one heart. On boards like this, I really like a down bet because that's exactly how I'd play ace-king as well, which obviously would be a miss on this board and constitutes a big portion of my four bet range. So I down bet to $65 and he makes the call. When the turn is the 10 of clubs, it's no longer time to be cute with our down bets. We're ripping it all in for what we have left. Yeah, but I'm not saying <laughs> Uh, he snap folds so we take down a pretty big pot without really having to do much except just be aggressive with our pocket aces it's fun when aces go easy like that and we take this one down in this hand we look down at pocket queens hello ladies we see an under the gun raised to 12 dollars the man in the cutoff is the prosper donkey he makes the call to 12 and because of him being in the hand i decide to size up and i'm also in the small blind I have to raise a little more out of position i make it 50 dollars to go under the gun plus one fold so that's good news and the prosper donkey does not let go of his hand he makes the call which is very expensive as he's gonna be going to a flop with a very wide range pre-flop trying to get in hands trying to get on the vlog that sort of thing going to the flop we see the board of 874 rainbow I'm not exactly sure where I'm at with this board because I have no idea what the, his range is but I know that this does actually hit his pre-flop calling range so I decided to bet for value here for the sizing of $45 and he makes the quickest call as you can make puts his chips in before i can get mine in going to a turn card it is the seven of spades and um i actually in the moment don't like this card and decide to check here uh, as he might have hit trips with a single pair of holdings but uh in hindsight i wish i would have bet here i think it's a good spot to get more value and then we see a river card which is not a good one the four of hearts so here I decided to check to induce a bluff, hoping that he's going to bet big, try to get me to fold ace high. I feel like I'd play ace king like this with a, a C bet on the flop and check, check, turn in river. He does end up betting big. $200. Prosper Donkey does not disappoint. So expecting him to be betting big here, um, not liking that I let the four of hearts come on the river i should have bet on the turn um for the reason that he's gonna be bluffing here a decent percentage of the time and i'm getting two to one pot odds i decide to make the call I think you got it. yep he is good after i make the call he flips over king four off suit boys yes Ladies and gentlemen, he is calling with King 4 offsuit, trying to get some chips from me, and this time it works out. What a favorable run out for him. Although I'm happy with my call on the river, I think he'll be bluffing there a lot of the time as well. We look down at pocket sevens in the big blind. Middle position opens it up to $13, small blind calls, and I consider three betting here. However, I just decide to see a flop and make the call. This is one of the very first hands we were dealt in. Flop's a nice one. It comes seven, king, three, two diamonds. So we flop middle set, the small blind checks, and I decide to check as well, set the trap, and middle position falls for it betting $15. When it folds to me, I'm definitely going to be raising here to start charging kings as well as flush draws, and I raise to the tune of $50. And we actually see something pretty nice. Middle position re-raises that $50 to $150. Here I've got about $240 total in my stack. So about $190 after, I, after that $50 raise. And I decide just to rip it all in here. I don't think that there's much that's going to be folding for only $90 more. So I rip it all in and middle position snap calls. We're off to a run out. It comes 2 of clubs and 10 of clubs. 
I'm assuming we're good here. I tabled my sevens and we are. We scoop up a massive pot to start off the session. All right, let's run it up. Next, we look down at ace, jack of hearts on the button. There is one limp and the hijack raises to seven. Uh, as you guys know, we're playing Texas poker and no one likes folding. So I'm gonna three bet this ace, jack of hearts in the button. $7 is just not enough. I make it 20. Uh, the small blind cold calls, the limper calls, and the hijack calls. So, again, what do I know? We're still going four ways to a flop. Hopefully we can just smash it. Ten queen king rainbow. Uh, I'd consider that a smash. A smash and a half. Checks to me. Someone's got to have a piece of this board, right, gentlemen? I mean, come on. Uh, I bet $50 into a pot of around 80 And fold, fold, fold. Hmm. Poker's, poker's hard. That's it for me. In this hand, we are late into the night. Look down at seven, eight of spades. I've been folding a lot. So seeing this hand is suited connect, not gonna be letting this go in middle position. I, let, I make it $10. Although I think a fold here is fine. Taking the aggressor approach, the tight image is also good as well. That's what we do here. We see a raise from the hijack, a smaller raise here. He's to $25. Then the person in the blue makes the call for only 15 more dollars. I am not folding here. I go make a call going off to a flop 772. I flop trips. Big Blind and I both check, and the hijack now bets $35. He's been an aggressive player, and great news, the Big Blind calls behind for $35. So now I'm putting the person who raised preflop on an overpair, and putting the Big Blind on a 7-2 or a hard draw. For those reasons, I decided to raise it up by making $125, trying to charge all of the hard draws or pairs and also trying to just get some extra value in the, in the pot. Unfortunately, the initial aggressor, the hijack, makes the fold, and after he folds, I'm not looking, it's not looking too good as I put the big blind on a weaker hole. He makes the fold as well. Not too bad a result though. Even though everyone fold, I'm glad to tip, scoop in that pretty big pot, and that pot ex helps us get out of the red. The next hand we get into it, we have a seven of clubs in the hijack. It folds around to me and I actually decide to open this up only to $7. The button and the big blind make the call and the big blind actually ridicules me for my small bet sizing right here. I don't think I'm folding any hand for $7. The flop comes pretty okay. Nine, six, seven, two hearts. So we flop middle pair top kicker. The big blind checks. I decide actually to check here as well instead of throwing out a C bet. And the button decides to bet here to the tune of $15. The big blind calls and my hand's pretty marginal. However, I decide to stick around here as there are a lot of draws that I'm ahead of that might not get there that I can still have the best hand here. So I make the call and we're off to a turn three ways, which is a great one for us. Probably the best card in the deck the seven of diamonds. So we turn trips with the best kicker possible. Again, I decided to check it over to the button who bets $20. This is super small sizing for this pot size. And it seems like he's kind of setting his price with maybe an eight or some sort of flush draw. And so when the big blind folds to me, I actually decided to raise it up here to $60 to start charging those draws. The button thinks about it for a moment before calling and we're off to a river which is probably the worst river possible, the 10 of hearts. Not only does the 8 get there with the straight, the flush draw also gets there unfortunately. So I think this is a good spot just to check and assess what sizing of a river bet the button makes. However, that's not the case. I check to the button and he actually checks back. So at this point, I'm assuming my a7 might actually be good here. I table it and we are good. We scoop up a nice little pot our way. Happy to take that one down and this game is called hideaway in this game you're allowed to use three cards the two that you look down at which i look at two queens and the one in front of you which i have another queen that means i have three of a kind queens before even going to a flop crazy this is the third best possible hand behind two aces in your hand and an ace so going to the action under the gun limps a lot of people like to limp and try to see flops in this sort of game not many people raise but i decide to go on the bigger side after three players make the limp i raised to 25 dollars the small blind makes the cold call behind me the under the gun limper makes the call and the person in the cutoff makes the call as well so going four ways to a flop pot is already a hundred dollars and i'm not too too scared of really any board the board comes 6 10 king so if he had someone has pocket kings that's the only hand really beating me so looking pretty good i decide when it checks to me i decide to down bet to 
$45 pod trying to charge any single pair of holdings not too many draws available on this board and everyone does make the fold but a super fun hand to include and this hand helped us get in the black for the night Thank you, Hideaway, for this custom game. Very fun to play, guys. All right. Well, this is a super fun one for you guys. We looked down at Jack-10 Offsuit in the big blind. There's one limper, and the button opens it up to $12. Small blind calls, and for this price, I decided to see a flop. I make the call, and the limper calls as well. So we're off to a flop four ways. Flop comes king, queen, six, two spades, giving us the open ender to the nuts. Uh, however, there is a flusher out there, so some of our outs aren't necessarily live. It checks all the way over to the button who decides to bet to the tune of $22. The small blind folds and I decide to make the call here getting a pretty good price with my open ender and the limper calls as well. We're off to a turn three ways which is a perfect one for us the nine of hearts giving us the absolute nuts. Again I decide just to check here hoping to induce a bet from the button whose range is actually favored on this type of flop. It checks over to the button who makes a comment. I feel like I'm about to get check raised. Pretty much a soul read here as I had the exact intention of check raising and the button decides to check it as well. So we are off to a river, which is a pretty good one for me. It is the king of diamonds, allowing me to be able to get max value from some sort of rivered trips. I decide to lead out here for $70 with my straight. The limper folds and the button thinks about it for a second before ripping it all in for $550 total. We each started the hand with about $600 in our stack, so this is a huge raise from the button. It's about $480 more for me to call to a pretty big pot, and I just don't know what type of holdings he's going to be doing this with. Maybe a miss flush draw would bluff here. However, it really doesn't seem like a bluff. It seems like he's trying to get max value from some sort of king or maybe a straight like Jack-10. Uh, this is such a tough spot. I don't really know what to do. It's such a big raise and such a large amount that I have to be calling off here, especially when there's a lot of hands that beat me like King-9. Maybe he would check that on the turn. Maybe pocket queens would check on the turn to some, set some sort of trap or maybe pocket sixes. My gut is just telling me that I'm beat here. He's either gonna be doing this here with a full house or a complete bluff and I don't really know if this guy has it in him to make a big bluff like this. He has been a pretty aggressive player at the table. However, I haven't seen him make massive bluffs like this. He's just been aggressive on the flop and kind of slowed down on the turn river most of the times. My gut is just telling me to fold and so I trust it and I lay it down. He flips over, 9-3 offsuit. What a freaking bluff. Holy, shit. Holy crap, props to this guy for being able to rip that all in on the river. He must have gotten some sort of read off me that I had pretty good hand, however, not the nuts. I don't even know what to say about that. That was that was like a soul read bluff right there. Holy crap. Oh, why did I fold? Let me know what you guys think in the comments about this fold. I'm pretty tilted, so I didn't really want to play much more after this. We decide to rack up and still book a nice little profit, even after getting bluffed out of our shoes. What up, boys? How's it going? How we doing? Let's go. Um, I'll start us off. Had a rough start. Prosper Donkey, you got me on that. <laughs> the... What hand was that? Damn, I played a lot of poker. Seven hours. We seven played? hours later. Dude, that's crazy. That didn't feel like seven. Seven that's hours you know later, addicted. after I donked some off to uh, Prosper Donkey himself, I ended up $90. In for 600 out for 690 There you go. Uh, I ended, I went up about 380 tonight. Uh, in for 400 out for 780 so money. Uh, oh wait actually 750 out for 350 liar profit of 350 not too bad had some exciting hands yeah uh for it's me you know just a classic seven hour grind in for 360 out for 365 don't Big know money. what the hourly money, is on dude. that but it's more than zero dollars per Big hour money. and as long as it's more than zero dollars per hour we're happy Tell the you. boys won two next gen three for three Let's all go. in the black baby. always happy for that even though i'm the smallest winner happy for the boys and i let's go hey guys make sure to like and hit that subscribe button it helps the channel make sure to support share it to your friends all of it helps we appreciate it Check, check out the out, merch. Yeah, check out our Instagram as well at Next Gen Poker. The Next Gen Poker, Jello. The Next Gen Poker. All right. Well, uh, follow <laughs> us on all those outlets. And uh, boys, we love you guys. Catch you in the next one. Peace. Peace. And girls, we love you. you